Good morning and welcome. Um, I'm Brooke Benscooter, and uh, today we're talking to Maureen Boyd, who is with the Moxie Exchange Movement. And, and I want to set this up a little bit so you have an idea of why. We have a couple of reasons we're talking to her. Um, Maureen's joining us by Skype from Fort Collins, Colorado. And that's where the Moxie Exchange Movement headquarters is. But there is a chapter here in Des Moines that we're going to talk about and how that came to be. But um, talking in general about women's leadership and professional development and how this organization is really outside the box and thinking about ways that women can, in fact, become engaged and um, not only engaged in organizations and businesses, but also engaged with themselves and other women. So um, Maureen, I'm thrilled that you would join me this morning at this wee hour, <laughs> unfortunately for you. Um, but um, we're gonna talk first just briefly about how the Moxie Exchange Movement came to be and um, you know where that brainchild came from because it's definitely outside the box. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was I was recently, and it's a pleasure to be here. So, um, I was recently asked and interviewed, um, and somebody asked me, "What's the definition? What makes somebody creative?" And I think that's really kind of at the essence and core of your show, Brooke. It's seeing you know, people that are they see a problem and just feel like it's got to be fixed. And that really is what happened with Moxie. I um, was serving on a board of directors for an organization and was spending a week in California in a, in a series of meetings. So the board was coming together and this was an organization with absolutely at a crossroads. So I walked in the room and yet again, it was me and middle-aged white guys. Um, and nothing against middle-aged white guys. I'm married to a great one. <laughs> um, you know. But it was one of those, those moments where I thought, okay, this again. Um, and, and what do I need to do to change that dynamic? So I left those meetings and I was exhausted. Uh, the really high level conversation that was happening because we were really trying to get this organization out of the ditch. And also because of, of really what I call holding up the estrogen in the room, right? Being that the only woman. And so I left and I was debriefing and thought, this has got to change, right? There's got to be, I, I loved the conversation that I was having with those men. And what's got to change is I haven't been able to find the place where I can have that same conversation with women. And from that, Moxie was born, right? There was a, there was a gap in the marketplace. There was a need to get women, and I describe them as women in motion, Right? Women who don't want to be this, in the same place next year, they are learners, they are growing, whether that's they're entrepreneurial and they're growing their business, or that they are in a corporate environment and they want to stretch and grow and move up that um, corporate ladder. We also have nonprofit leaders. And, and really what we're doing with Moxie is creating a community for those women in motion to come together and learn and grow and stretch one another and have those higher level business conversations that I just simply couldn't find anywhere else. Well, one of the things that's um, I, in, in, in true transparency here, I, I am the, um, the Moxie exchange representative for Des Moines. So, so I'm already involved in the organization and had, gladly we la launched in January of 2013 and um, have a core group of women that are coming together on a regular basis to experience exactly what Maureen has put together. But one of the things um, that I think is so striking is the fact that the approach is so different. Women have a tendency to think of networking and professional development as selling themselves to each other rather than um, learning from each other. So talk a little bit about how you looked at that and said, here's, here's how I'm going to do it and here's why this works. Yeah, that, that is a great question. and, and uh, 
I, and by the way, Des Moines, you're so lucky to have Brooke um, leading Mox Hakes Change there. She's incredible. Um, I, I'm actually the last person that I ever would have expected to start an all women's organization because I had walked away from all women's organizations many years ago because it was, I wanted those organizations to be something they were not. Uh, 99.9% .9 of all women's organizations are networking organizations. And there is nothing wrong with that. Um, networking organizations are designed to help you build your connections and help you build sales. And so there is absolutely a time and a place for those. That's not what I was looking for. Um, I'm actually pretty good at sales. I have a big network already. Those were not things that I needed. What I needed was to be with my tribe, right, to use Seth Godin's words. I needed to be with a group of women who tend to walk in and, quite frankly, they walk into a room and they look around and they think, I am one of the most successful people here, right? And I know that in being in this room, I'm going to be asked to give a lot, um, and that's, that's okay too, but there comes a point in time where you need to get, where you need those new, fresh ideas. And that's really at the base and core of Moxie. So my background actually is organizational development. So I've spent my career helping organizations and people learn, right? And you do that through strategy, you do that through people. So what we put together with Moxie was really what are those best practices for leadership and for learning. So women are great. We get together, we have a glass of wine, we connect, we laugh. What is always missing is that structured conversation. So that's the basis of Moxie. It's really taking, and I, I joke and say, I smashed all of these leadership and learning best practices together, right? So that, you know, what are those things that work in terms of getting great ideas from thought leaders? Boy, there's a platform that everybody loves out there called TED Talks. Okay, how do we take that platform and create something that is uh, moxie? So we've got what we call our power thinking interviews. I'm interviewing women around the country that simply have ideas to share. Right? And those interviews usually last about an hour to an hour and a half. But for the purpose of the meetings, those are edited down to 15 minutes. So it's a very powerful, succinct interview with a woman that's got ideas to share, right, that the rest of the Moxie community can learn from. Same thing, looking at when you bring a board of directors or a board of advisors together and you're really hammering out some big issues, how do you do that? Well, for women, we tend to get the feedback that we're not concise, so we've built in a process that's called a power five that is highly structured, that gets right down to the meat of an issue, whether that's something about growing my uh, profession, my career, or something about growing myself as a leader. So that format, again, is based on best practices. We've built in goal setting and planning because we know that that's one of the things that help move people forward. We've got um, connections. And all of this is governed by a code of ethics. Right from the very start, our members know there is no selling allowed, right? You would not have a conversation at Moxie that you would not walk into a board of directors meeting or a board of advisors meeting and have so that you know, you're not going to sell tickets to your nonprofit event, right? right. You're not going to ask somebody to sit down and have coffee so that they can find out more about you and your business. What you are going to do is come and say, I'm here to learn, right? I'm here to learn. I'm here to share. I'm here to grow. And I'm here to help the other women around me do those same things. And one of the things I think that has been so interesting to me is that that is hard for women um, to really embrace a different model. Once it, it, they do it, they get it. But getting them out of that, I got to sell myself mode is really difficult at first. You know, it's, it's interesting. We have to get over um, our, a couple initial hurdles. And that is um, women saying, this is too, too good to be true. I know I'm going to show up and I know somebody's going to hit me up and try, right, right. try and get me to host a home party. Um, so we have to get over <laughs> that initial hurdle. And then there is this resistance that we see with a lot of 
newer members or even people that are coming on, you can come one time and test drive, right? The process yeah. to be sure we really are what we say we are. Uh, there's this initial resistance to the process saying, oh, it's too fast or, you know, this is too structured. And then suddenly like these light bulbs go off and it's like, wow, we accomplished so much. I can't believe all the ground we covered. I can't believe, particularly after the power five process, people are saying, I can't believe an hour just went by. We covered so much ground. We were talking about high level things. We were getting right deep into the issue issues in a really powerful way. So it is one of those, you've got, once people understand the process, understand that the process is based on these leadership and learning best practices, and then once they experience it, it's one of the things that our members love the most, right? They're saying, this process works. I appreciate the structure. It really does enable the learning and the growth to happen in the room. It's interesting to me because what's happened here in Des Moines <laughs> is the first question I get is, Two and a half hours. What could possibly take two and a half hours? Number one. Number two is when at the beginning of the Power Five, when we tee it up and start making, you know, having people think about what their thousand dollar or even some respects million dollar question or opportunity or need is, um, how they um, say, you know, how can we do this in an hour? And, and um, often they, um, at the end of it, first of all, they're worn out <laughs> because they've spent so much time giving to each other. But secondly, they, they really have an appreciation for why that structure works so well for them. Yeah, I think when people initially, again, that goes back to when people are saying two and a half hours, they're saying two and a half hours because they're thinking, Oh, good Lord, I can't sit through two and a half hours of network. <laughs> exactly. Right? <laughs> right? Instead of, oh, this is two and a half hours where there is not a wasted minute. It is designed to be very streamlined, very powerful. You know, we, and we always, because at our essence and core, we are a learning and growth organization, right? That's why we exist. So we're always looking at the model and making sure does the, you know, is this model, is this process? So we make very subtle, small tweaks now and again to make sure that it's really serving the highest needs of the members to make sure the learning and growth is happening. And it is fun after that first meeting when people are like, oh my gosh, it's done. I can't, <laughs> two and a half hours went by, you know, like, can we get more time? And that's really the piece where if you think about so many people walk through this world not spending time investing in themselves and their own learning and growth. And that's so critical. Uh, one of the most selfish things that you can do for your family is to stay in place, right? To stop learning, to stop growing. And you can't earn more than you learn. Um, so you really need to be thinking about this two and a half hours and is, is an investment in my learning, in my growth, so I can keep moving forward and so I can serve every, everybody from my family to my organization um, in the best way possible. And if you think about all of the hours that we're spending uh, in a month, two and a half hours invested in personal learning and growth um, is like a drop in the bucket. So that's why we want to make sure those two and a half hours are really, really powerful. Well, and the, the other thing that I think is so amazing is when you tell people who are attending a meeting, this is a gift of time. Because we talk about goals, and, and one of the things that I find so refreshing about Moxie is the fact that we're not just talking about personal goals or professional goals, but we're talking about both. And the fact that there's a yin and yang to that. I mean, if you're having health issues, something has to give on the business side and vice versa. And, and, and not treating those goals as siloed, but in fact, that they have to work together. And if they don't work together, then they're, you're not going to be successful. So the opportunity to set goals and have plans for both parts of your life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's the one of the reasons that it is so powerful that Moxie is women only. Because we do get asked that question, why is this women only? And it's simply because the conversation is different. 
you can cover some ground when it's just women in the room that 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 conversation would not happen were at co-ed. And there is a time and a place wonderfully for the guys to get together, right? And just have the conversation right. because it's different and it's different energy when it's just them. There is a time and a place for a co-ed conversation to take place. And there is a time and a place for it to be just women where we can talk about the complexities sometimes. Um, just last month, there was a topic where was a, a woman who's deal, she's sandwiched right now, right? She's dealing with running her business. She's got parents whose health is failing and she's got teenagers at home and she is at the end of her rope and, and needed a place to be able to talk about how do I manage through this time in my life, right? I can't just let my business, you know, go. Uh, and I've got, I can't burn myself out because if my health goes, everything suffers and she needed the place to be able to talk about solutions and ideas, and frankly, just for a minute or two to just let it go, right? And to just be able to say, this sucks, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, yes. So so it makes it, it makes it, um, it's a safe haven. And, and I think to that end, let's talk just for a minute about the ethics, because the code of ethics to me really makes it a safe place. And it also makes it a place where women can bring issues that are really taunting them um, yes. in the workplace and get input from other women who may have experienced it, um, may manage a process that they're having a tough time with. It's, it's a great opportunity to, to talk about, especially business issues, um, where people can in fact uh, talk with other people who may have had a similar experience. Yeah, and uh, the code has existed right from the start. So the, our code of ethics, I'm a big fan of things that are simple yet powerful. So our code of ethics, from the time you walk into a meeting, whether you're coming as a guest uh, and then when you sign up as a member, you are committing. You're not agreeing. You're committing to living by this code of ethics. And the code covers everything from confidentiality um, to that you're there to inspire. You're not there to whine. There's no whining allowed. Uh, Except from 5.30 to 6. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there's no selling allowed. That it is about learning, sharing, inspiring, right? Sort of bringing your A game and being your best self. And then we have a process. Um, and we're very uh, straightforward right from the start saying, listen, if you're in violation of this code of ethics, your membership will be revoked and your dues are non-refundable, right? So we set the stage right up front. This is simple, powerful, and we're extraordinarily serious about enforcing the code. But you know this, Brooke, what, what happens is when women see this code of ethics, when, when qualified members see this, potential members see this code of ethics, they're, they breathe a sigh of relief, yep, exactly. right? And it's like, boy, I do get to come in and it, I can open the kimono and I can talk about those tough issues. I know the other women in the room are there to support me. I know that we're all here to learn and to grow and to really push each other to be more and learn more. Uh, and, and that we ask our members to enforce the code so that if somebody's in violation, there's a very simple process where they can let somebody know, hey, you're crossing the line here. Um, and then our MOXIE execs, the fantastic women like, like you, Brooke, who are leading these groups, if there is kind of a repeat offender, which we, by the way, have not had, yeah. um, there is a process to have a very crucial conversation with her and let her know if this happens again, you're out. And, and we've had conversations with potential members before they've ever joined, where I always tell the execs, you know if somebody is, is actually going to be in learning and growth mode or if they're seeing this as a networking opportunity. Have that conversation up front and, and let her know, this probably isn't the group for you. If you're looking for networking, boy, here are some options for you. But Moxie is about learning and growth. So we have the conversations up front. We set the context up front. Um, and as I said, we've been, um, groups have been up and running for about two and a half years now. And, and the, that code and that process works really beautifully. That's awesome. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. 
after a break. Um, Maureen, I hope you'll hang on with us and, and we'll be back in just a moment. Great. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. <laughs> Keep going though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed right or it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Welcome back to Outside the Box, and today my guest is Maureen Boyd, head Moxie at the Moxie Exchange Movement from Fort Collins, Colorado. That's why she's joining us by Skype this morning. Very early, I might add, which is, is awesome that she's willing to join us at this wee hour. Um, so um, Maureen and I have actually been working together since last July. Um, Maureen and I found a, a common ground, and, and one of the things that I like the most about what she has created with the Moxie Exchange Movement is the fact that it's based on some principles um, that are used in education and organizational development, and, and the fact that, they're, that the structure we were talking about is there for a reason. It's not, um, it's not accidental. And what I think people find after they go through a meeting is, in fact, it works. So talk a little bit about um, how you came to put all those pieces together so it did work. Sure, you bet. Um, I, and I think that really gets into uh, my background and my passion. So I joke and say that I used to show up for my book club just to drink the wine and see my friends. Uh, because I'd never read the book that we had that month. I have, I, my bedside table is stacked with books on leadership, on learning, on business. Um, so I think when I looked at what are we going to do, how are we going to elevate the conversation that professional women are having? Because that's really what we're 
that's really what we're about. We, we're about how can women be the very best leader they can be, be the very best corporate citizen they can be, community citizen they can be. So how do we do that? Um, and I don't want to get too geek speak here, um, but uh, everything, this process is really designed around action learning. Um, and if, if you're not familiar with that concept, action learning is how do you take what's really happening in your life that's right on your desk today, right, right today, and apply that into a learning model that's going to drive results. Because the stats around just sort of traditional training, if I go off and somebody says, I'm going to send you to some conflict resolution training, or even if I choose to do, if I'm a business owner, I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to invest in some training, I'm going to head out. The stats on that are that we're going to retain less than 2% of that material. And we're, go we're only going to retain that amount because it, we can't, it's not sticky, right? It, we can't apply that learning back to our everyday life versus the MOXIE model and the process and how it's designed is really about, it's all based on what's happening real world and then we design the process around that. So it goes so far as how the interaction in the room is designed. So it is in an hourglass shape, right? So the, the start of the meeting is a large group process, right? We're, we're watching this thought leader share her ideas. And by just the way, throw in there for a second the kind of thought leaders that you have brought to the table, just so it kind of puts it in perspective. We're not sure. talking about people that are local business people. We're talking about people on a national scale that are women that are running successful organizations or companies, right? Right, right. So, for example, last month um, our speaker was Joanna Barsh. Joanna is one of the top women at McKinsey and Company, and McKinsey is one of the largest consultancies in the world. Right. Right? So Joanna did research and wrote the book, How, Re How Remarkable Women Lead, and she was talking about what came out of that research, which is the centered leadership model. Um, we've had Meg Hirschberg, who is one of the co-founders of Stonyfield Farms Yogurt and um, is a columnist for Inc. Magazine. And again, I think the thing that's really important is these women are not trying to, to get a consulting gig. Um, they are not trying to sell anything. They simply have ideas to share, right? And the thing that is wonderful is those interviews then are housed in our members-only website. So if I'm a member, I can access those again and again and again. And, and I would highly encourage that. I'm actually doing the interviews, right, conducting those interviews, every time I watch one of the videos, I get something new, right, because the idea that I need at that point in time is going to be there for me. So large group watching that, then, but then we take it to the table group, right? So we, it's one thing to hear these ideas. It's quite another then to say, okay, what am I going to do with this information, right? And what am I going to do in the next 24 hours? What ideas really struck me, and then how does that apply to what's happening in my world? So we've moved from a large group experience to a table group experience. The second part of the meeting is what we call power planning. Again, there's all kinds of research around if you write down your goals, you're far more likely to achieve them. So the room gets quiet, and we set the goals and plans for the month. That I, think, I think the other thing, Maureen, that's key to that is that when people join they're asked to bring their year-long goals. Absolutely. So, so it's not just you're out in the parking lot before the meeting saying, okay, what's my goals for this month? You, you're, you're building a string and you're weaving the plan based on not where you came from, but where you're going. What's the where goal for the year? Absolutely. And we, we really encourage and always at our January meeting, we build in some extra time, right? So if you hadn't had time through the holidays to really think about what are those big five things I'm trying to accomplish this year, right? And everything that we do should tie back to what are the big targets for me, right? And then for this month, what am I trying to accomplish? What needs to happen this month that are going to drive those longer range goals? 
And new members get a binder, and in that binder are 12 tabs. And behind those 12 tabs is this planning form. So I joke and say it's a little bit like the movie Groundhog's Day, right? Every month, you know you're going to sit down and you're going to go through this planning process, and it's going to build and build. We say Moxie in general, this whole process and being a part of this community is uh, a marathon, right? It's not a sprint. It is, okay, this month is going to build on the next month, is going to build on the next month. And it really is about gaining momentum, right, in your career, in your business, and, and that longer range thinking, but what do I need to get done today and this month to drive those longer range plans? The third part of the meeting is designed around best practices around having a board of advisors, right? It goes all the way back to Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, and probably before that, that everybody should have a mastermind. What we've done in this process is circumvented one of the issues that tends to come up in that process, and especially for women, that we can have a lot of conversation and a lot of conversation and a lot of conversation and a lot of conversation, right? That's not going anywhere. So it's a very structured process where you're bringing a topic that's going to feed back to those longer range goals. And it's, I've got a brilliant group of women sitting at my table. I'm going to get both written and verbal feedback from them on, a, on an issue, an opportunity, a best practice that's really going to drive my learning and my growth. So we've had topics, everything from taking a new product to market to making, trying to determine if making a lateral career move uh, is, the right, is the right way to go. I mean, it's really, again, back to that action learning premise. What's on my plate? What matters? And then I can go back and apply that learning the very next day or even that evening if they want. And same thing, those forms, the written forms, go in that binder. So I'm, I've am i got at my fingertips my plans for the year and then feedback and ideas from really brilliant women on things that matter to me. And those feedback forms are awesome. People, people, um, it's interesting to me because people, after having done three meetings, people are eager to see not only what they got told verbally by the one person who wrote that sheet as they're, they're me the member of their monthly board of directors, as I like to call them. But, yeah. but they, they want to see the thought that went into what was written. And, and it's almost like they're, um, I don't want to say hoarding them, but, but they, they really, they know the value. They've already seen verbally what the value is. So they're excited about the resources that might have been put on a sheet of paper or or who you might think about talking to, or I can try and introduce you to X, Y, Z person. Um, there's so many actionable items that come out of those, um, I call them yellow sheets, because that's the color they happen to be in Des Moines. But um, the fact that people walk away with something that's more than just floating in their head. Oh, yeah. It's so tangible. I actually think those sheets are, are gold, right? Because if you think about having a very successful group of women focused on you, right, and focused on a topic, a strategic topic that you have brought to the group, and you're going to, in the moment, right, you're going to be soaking in the, the one thing that they're sharing with you verbally, right, because this process is really tight. So they aren't going to be able to give you all the ideas that are on that sheet, and, and I have a saying that it, there's high value in letting things land, right? So I'm going to hear that. And then I can go and I can read these sheets. And I love it, Brooke. I mean, how many times do women, they fill up that front side and they flip it over and they're writing on the back side because they've got so much to offer. And I can go back and throughout the month, I can look at that and say, okay, I got this piece of this done, let me go back and see what other ideas were there. Oh, now I can start and I can start implementing and working on this piece. And we actually have women that have brought a strategic topic month after month after yes. month, right? Right. We've had women that have started businesses, right? So they start with their, their first topic might be, I'm thinking of starting this business. And then they, they get further and further down the path. Here's where they are in that process. Here's what's important today. Same thing, we've had women that have been making career shifts within their companies, right? Okay, what do I need to do this month to make that happen? Okay, next step, next step, next step. 
we've had women use the um, the Power Five time as a, a focus group, right? right? That yeah. I'm bringing this product to market. I want to get because you're sitting with different women every month and getting different perspective every month as well. So the again, this the process and the structure. Um, is really, really well thought out. I mean, everything from, again, what's happening in the room from an interaction standpoint, how does it all build, how do each of the elements support one another, what order are they in. Um, yeah. It wasn't just a back of the napkin, here's, uh, you know, here's, I, I, I actually feel like my entire career and all the learning I've done to this point in time was for the purpose of designing this process, Right and making this process as powerful as it can be. And I really should talk about the last part of the process. We go back to a large group experience and we have power connections. Now this is not your traditional networking, right? Remember, there's no selling allowed. And if you think about what's already happened in the room, right? I've already, we've listened to this thought leader together. We have talked about those big ideas. We've done some planning. We've gone through this Power 5 process, roundtable board of advisors process. There is really good fodder for amazing conversation, right? And that conversation is often, oh, my gosh, Brooke, I have more for you on your Power 5. Or I'm going to walk across the room. I sat with somebody last month, and I know she was wrestling a pretty big alligator. I want to see what happened, right? I want to follow up. Maybe there's somebody new to the group. I want to go find out who she is, what she's up to in the world, and how I can support her as a part of this community. So that's, that's the thinking behind the elements, how they're designed, um, and really, really, again, about all every piece and part of the meeting is we have highly successful, very busy women Let's make sure this process is designed so there is not a wasted minute. And that's actually the feedback that we get very continually about the process is it's so tight and so powerful and really does drive that learning. Let, let me tell you about one um, incident that happened, not incident, but opportunity that was discovered at our last meeting. I actually um, had a woman who has been wrestling with the idea of changing um, her model, she's a career counselor, but the word coach is a real hot word. And, um, and, and she's, um, she's a second career coach, I think. Um, but it was interesting, she brought the topic twice, two months in a row, but she had a totally different table both months. And, and I think what what she found out was that um, she really needs to personalize what she does based on who she's marketing to. So there was that kind of aha moment, but it took her a couple of months to get to the aha moment, and, and it, was, it was very powerful for her because I think she'd been reading a lot of things and not so much listening to her own heart about what she really feels she offers someone. So it was a remarkable experience for her to um, find women who in some cases may not need her services, but, but were willing to say, if I hear this, if you call yourself this, this is what it means to me. Yep. And, um, and she got a lot of feedback and I think she's now on a direction which really is helpful because she had to go back to her employer to talk about how she was going to change the model of how she was selling her services on behalf of the employer. Right, right. I love it. I love it. And yeah. I think that's the, if you think about the, just in a single table group, the level of experience, expertise, years of business experience and leadership experience that you get to tap into, right? So if you've got five women uh, sitting at your table with you and you get all of their ideas and thinking and experience and brilliance, right? That's so powerful. And then you get to do that the next month with a slightly different mix of women and the next month, but you're also forming relationships with, with the entire group, right? And, so you and the have, other thing about that is that because of the way it's set up, people are they know that they want quality feedback for their own Power Five. 
So they're very willing to listen and be giving to the other okay. people in the group, which that dynamic is huge anyway with women. And there are a couple of um, unintended wonderful consequences that are coming from this. One is the, in the frame up process itself, you have to get very succinct about, you have to ask even for what type of feedback you're looking for, <laughs> excuse me. It's very different if I'm asking for a best practice versus brainstorming, exactly. right? So I even have to think about what, what do I need from my table group? And then I have to share really pertinent information. We've had members tell us that even filling out that form helps bring clarity for them. The other thing that we're, we're learning from our members is that this process is teaching them outside the meeting process, is teaching them to be really concise in their communications. Right? So when they're showing up to a meeting, they can articulate their point of view and their ideas in a really succinct, powerful way. Well, and you I only think, have, what, 10 seconds to make a first impression anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're really, um, and then again, we've got the members only site. So there's this community of women around the country who are connecting, right? So if you think about not just the women sitting in your group, but the women sitting in San Francisco, in Rochester, New York, in Madison, Wisconsin, in Northern Colorado, in Denver, I mean, these markets all around the country, this is a community of women with so many resources at their fingertips and so many ideas at their fingertips and this really strong sense of reciprocity, right? I, that I'm finally in a room where I'm going to give as much I'm I'm sorry I'm going to get yeah, as much. much as I give. Yeah, right. Huge. So there really is this. Everybody is is highly engaged. We're also hearing from members. Gosh, Brooke brought this topic this month, but I learned from her topic. Right. That applies to me. Yep. So. Yep. So um, we're learning not just from our our own Power Five topics, but from others as well. Yes. Well, we're going to take another quick break. We weren't sure we were going to be able to fill an hour, but I think we're going to be able to. <laughs> Um, without letting Maureen go. So uh, we'll be right back after a quick break and uh, talk some more about Moxie and, and what's planned for the future. And I also want to talk about the Go Girl project. So uh, stay with us and we'll be right back. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drink, dance, party. Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Fridays. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at KittiesUSA.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Oh, 
oh, you caught me. I was cheating. I was going to try and find a great quote that was on the uh, Facebook page for the Moxie Exchange event. Um, last month, I had a woman um, who posted on the site. Um, she couldn't come to the monthly meeting because she had just gotten a new job. And what she said was that her attendance at the Moxie meeting in February changed her life. Um, the fact that she hadn't felt appreciated or valued or actually that her concerns about where she was going in her career actually had merit. And at that uh, table board of directors at the February meeting, she found that. And what that, according to her, that has actually changed her life and she's now on an awesome path. Um, and, and now that she's working, we're hoping we'll, we're going to see her again at this month's meeting. But those kinds of stories um, are pretty amazing. And, and I, I feel incredibly blessed because I have to tell you, I hear those stories from our members across the country, um, that it, it's increasing confidence, it's increasing ideas, it's validating concerns, it's validating hunches. I mean, it's, it's sort of this, when you know that you've got external perspective, right, and external support and external ideas, that you're not in a vacuum anymore. Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that men don't ask for help and women do. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I think the only time the men ask for help is when they're lost in the car. Um, and sometimes and they don't do it then either. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but they're great, and they're great at asking for help and advice in a professional setting, right? And I love that. You know, all joking aside, women need to learn that. We are. Women tend to, I can do this alone or I'm going to die trying, right? Because I don't, I don't want this to be seen as a sign of weakness. And what Moxie does is says, uh-uh, come together with your true peers, be supported, get ideas um, that are really going to help move you forward. So, well, And you're getting um, feedback from people. I, I think one time, a lot of times we try to, as women, use our friend base as a business decision-making tool. And, and our friends are our friends and they love us no matter what. And sometimes they may not be willing to give you that hard feedback um, that says, you know, this really isn't a good idea. Or have you ever thought that maybe this could be interpreted a different way? The one thing that I find so amazing in um, The Power Five is listening to people reframe for people what their opportunity or their issue or problem is. Right. And sometimes people will just go, aha, I never <laughs> thought of it that way, yeah. um, which is awesome. Yeah, and, and I think we tell our members, we know this process works, right? We know it works. It's designed around best practices. We've seen it working in a really, really extraordinarily powerful way now for two and a half years and you have to come prepared, right? Boy, we know that's the truth. <laughs> right. If you're bringing a weak topic, you're probably going to not be happy with the feedback you get because the topic didn't really matter to you. Right. If you're not really engaging in watching that interview and really learning from that interview, if you're not really taking that time to plan in a powerful way, it doesn't matter how great the process is. So we say Moxie is not a spectator sport. It is full body contact, right? You come, yeah, you come ready to play, and you come ready to play hard. Yeah, and even as the as the Moxie here in Des Moines, I, I really have a hard time not wanting to jump into the table um, as I listen because um, I find I find the the feedback that I hear women getting really exciting and an opportunity, and sometimes I want to contribute. Um, the, the other part of that is um, the fact that we actually have picked topics that matter right now, that when I leave the meeting, I can start to work on that tomorrow or Absolutely. even that day. Yeah, we're not very big on theory, right? <laughs> Theory's not going to get you very far. 
What are those practical, real life issues, opportunities, best practices? And we say there is always, always a topic on your plate, right? Because I can be asking, what are best practices around communicating with my team, right? I can be asking exactly. some tough questions that I can't ask anybody else. Hey, you're meeting me for the first time. I want to hear your honest first impressions of me. And that's where Moxie is also a place where you're not going to hear what you want to hear. Yeah. You're, going to hear you're going to hear what you need to hear. Yeah, and that's right? that's great. a big difference. And, and the other thing um, that I'm excited about is the fact that this is also a tool that can be used by corporations um, to help women in positions not only plan a monthly strategy for how they're going to balance their life, but how do they take their business goals and dovetail it with what their personal professional goals are and, and make a plan that not only takes care of the corporate strategic plan, if you will, but yep. takes care of their own personal plan. Right, and their leadership development. I, I was actually in charge of succession planning, talent management at large companies. And, and frankly, with Moxie, I designed what I was always looking for. Right? It's very easy to track the results, what somebody's learned, what their goals are. So it really dovetails nicely with internal leadership development, internal succession planning models so that it's a, a very cost-effective way to develop the talent in your organization um, in a meaningful way. Again, that's, that's based on what do they need right now versus I'm going to go send them to training and I know that training is not going to stick, which used right. to frustrate the heck out of me. You asked, Brooke, um, right before the break, what's next for Moxie? And I think that's, that's really a piece of this, is we, we have created what I'm calling now an ecosystem um, for at the, you know, the people that live in that ecosystem are women who are learners. They're women who are interested in developing as leaders, inter interested in growing their career, their business themselves. So we have everything from the local exchange meetings I've written a series of books that if somebody wants to go through those books, there are action steps at the end of each um, chapter. We have what I call kind of the power moxies, uh, small group coaching process that if you want to take, the, take it to the next level with some of the other members around the country, um, the, the corporate programs. We really want, however, that wherever that woman's need is, we have an offering right? Show up at the local meeting, coaching, books, corporate, you know, different tools. We really, really want to support women in really stepping up and stepping into what's possible for them. And I, th I think that's what's so exciting is the fact that, that there's a whole lot of ways that women can be involved. Um, one of the things I do want to talk about just briefly, though, is there's a component of giving back here so Absolutely. can you tell us a little more about the Go Girl project? I, I'm so excited about this for the Des Moines area yeah. and am um, and, and anxious to share this with our audience. Yeah, um, you know, it's funny right now on Facebook, there's something flying around the Sheryl Sandberg quote saying, I want every girl that's ever been told she's bossy to know she's a leader. Um, and actually, I can see behind me, I didn't realize they'd be in the shot, pictures um, from Go Girl uh, a couple of years ago. So the Go Girl project is really at its heart and soul helping young girls understand that they are already leaders, right? And teaching them those leadership development skills and really stepping into what's possible for them. Because I was told as a young girl that I was bossy. And I think about if somebody would have taken me under her wing and said, Mo, let me share with you the difference between being bossy and being a lead, right? And, and what that would have meant for my path. So what we're doing with the Go Girl Project is I made a decision very early on. If we sell any products, which we do, we've got bracelets, we've got T-shirts, we've got inspirational quotes that are just from women. Yes. Um, any, any penny that we make from those sales goes to support girls coming to our annual event, which is called Moxie Fest, which is really a leadership and mentoring event for girls age 10 to 18. So our members get to bring up to three girls in their lives. We don't care who those girls are. They might be nieces, neighbors, their own daughters, coworkers' daughters, 
who do they want sitting in the room and breathing the oxygen of really strong, successful professional women with this idea that if you can see it, you can be it. So we're granting scholarships so as many girls as possible can come to those events. Um, I, I was gratified after the first event uh, two and a half years ago. I asked a girl and I said, you know, okay, it's been a couple of weeks. You came to Moxie Fest. What did you learn? And Brooke, there was this pause. And I thought, uh oh, <laughs> she hasn't learned anything. She didn't learn anything. <laughs> um, and she looked at me and she said, what I learned is I just need to lead my life from the inside out. It doesn't matter what others think of me. It matters what I think about myself. And I thought, if that one girl got that one thing, the Go Girl Project has already been successful. So we cover, um, the first year we did some training around emotional intelligence. Last year it was around financial literacy, teaching girls about money. This year it will be uh, around learning to ask and learning to negotiate what you want. And it's the girls coming together with the members in conversation. We've got some content We've got some videos, and it's, it's really, really magic. Um, we have girls now that have come back year after year, and it's really fun to see how excited they are. We always save some slots for some high-potential, high-risk girls. So in each one of the markets, we ask the execs, you know, it, it depends. In, in Madison, Wisconsin last year, they reached out to uh, uh, the East. Uh, there's an East Side Community Club um, we've had women partner with the Boys and Girls Club, with um, local guidance counselors to say, you know, who are those girls that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to come to an event like this and have this kind of learning? I mean, it's, it's fun watching the girls come in. Um, you know, they're like, what's this going to be about? And then watching them walk out, right? And their shoulders are back and they are really owning how brilliant they are and how wonderful they are and that they really are leaders. Well, I'm, I'm so looking forward to the opportunity here in Des Moines. Now, one thing about being virtual and being on the web is that anybody can watch the show. And we've talked about Des Moines and what's happening here. But how can people find out whether there's a Moxie chapter close to them? How, how do they find out more just in general about what we've talked about today and how they can insert themselves into the process? Yeah, great question. Um, Boy, social media is a wonderful thing for sure. Yes, it is. Um, we have all kinds of information out on our website, which is moxieexchange.com. There are two E's in the middle, moxieexchange.com. But we're, it, you can join in the conversation on our Facebook page, our LinkedIn group, out on Twitter. Um, there are all kinds of ways to intersect and really become a part of the community and join in the conversation and see what part of Moxie fits for you. Right. And see where where it intersects, where it's going to serve you the best, because, again, at the end of the day, we want professional women elevating the conversation that they're having so that they can succeed in really big ways. Well, it's a fabulous opportunity. And, and for people who are interested in the Des Moines um, opportunity, you can go to the uh, website Moxie Exchange with two E's in the middle and um, actually look for Des Moines. It will have all my contact information there. Um, the other thing that's nice is if you happen to be a traveler, which many of the women who belong are, and, and that third week of the month you're out of town, you have the opportunity to visit other chapters and meet other people, especially if you're like doing a lot of um, commuting um, where, where you know you're going to be a week, a month somewhere, um, you, you might as well take advantage of that board of directors that's more localized to where you're working. And I think the thing that's really wonderful about that too is you know you can walk into that meeting with confidence because the process happening in the Charlotte, same. North Carolina is the same process that's happening in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, the, we joke and say the only thing that should be different across the country are the accents. Yeah. The process is the same, the timing is the same, and then you're really developing those relationships with the members across the country because you're sitting in the chair next to them. Well, it's a great opportunity to see how 
how women might change their approach in other arenas because geographically we know there are some differences. So yeah, absolutely. Well, Maureen, I greatly appreciate um, your time this morning. There were like seven things that we didn't talk about, so I'm going to ask you to come back at some time. I want to talk about leaning in, that's yep. which is a hot topic right now. Um, some of the studies that we've had about women not being in the boardroom, what that means. So maybe we could get together again um, in a few weeks and talk about some of the issues that Moxie is trying to help women prepare to address. Absolutely. It'd be a pleasure. And it was a pleasure being here today. Okay. Well, thanks, Maureen. Um, I hope you have a great week. And to my audience, I hope I'll see you here next week for Outside the Box. Until then, continue to think outside the box.